Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff, and right here I have the Google Pixel. We're going to unbox it, but first here's a little bit of a story. I'm sure a lot of you guys have had issues getting your packages from someone like UPS or FedEx. FedEx takes the cake. They lost this, or at least it's been lost for several hours, and it turned out that instead of delivering it to my door, he gave it to a random maintenance person without saying anything, and eventually after calling around and going crazy, it was found out that it was at my leasing office. So here it is, thanks a lot, FedEx. Before they put my package in the trash can, they get really weird, I don't know. Opening up zip box. So I plan to use this as a personal phone. I really have been a fan of the Nexus line and I've been waiting so long to have a nice small phone with really good specs. Let's see if we can get this. So this has a smaller battery and not as pixel dense display, it's a 1080p display, but still that's probably going to be good enough for me at 5 inches. 1080p at 5 inches, that's, that's a pretty good pixel density. So here you see what it looks like with the box open. This is the very silver model and it's cute. It's actually quite small. It's very iPhone 6s size and first impression is this really looks like an iPhone. 6s. Actually, let me grab one. I no longer have a 6s, but this is an iPhone 7, which by the way, I'll be giving away. So you can see that it's pretty much the same size as the iPhone 7 here. It's a little bit taller, but from a distance, I really probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference unless I was looking directly at the back. So let's go ahead and take the plastic off and we'll see what else is in that box. Then I'll play with it for a little bit and do a first impressions. So, just taking the plastic. There we go. That's go crazy rain. Holy cow. Let's put this aside just momentarily. Look at the rest of what is in the box. Looks like we just have some documentation here. Looks like we have a sync cable. USB type C. We've got something else here. What is this? This must be an adapter. Then inside right here you have your power brick and another cable here. Wow. This one is actually USB type C on both ends. And that is all that is left in the box. All right, we're back with the first impressions. It's been about 24 hours. I've had several hours now to play around with this phone and get a little bit of a feel of what it's all about. So first I chose the smaller one, like I said in the beginning, because of the size. There are not many powerful Android phones out there at a good size. Of course, you can get the iPhone 7, nice powerful phone, but all the Android phones as of late are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm glad that we have a smaller phone without a lot of compromise here. Also, these phones are really expensive. We are now in iPhone territory for the price. So this starts out at 649 for the 32 gigabyte model. This is what I have. You add $100 more if you want to go for the 128 gigabyte model. Keep in mind, there is no SD card slot. Then if you want to go up to the XL size, it's $120 more over the baseline. So you end up with about 770. And then if you want the 128 gigabyte in the XL, it's about 870. So that's looking like the iPhones. Very, very expensive. So I figured I could get away with the cheapest one. And thankfully you've got unlimited cloud storage for all your pictures and your videos with this phone at full size. So all I really need is space for applications. So let's look around the phone, take a look at the design. The first thing that stood out to me is that I thought that this kind of was symmetrical, like a candy bar. Actually it tapers from the top down to the bottom here. It's thinner here than it is up here. Probably because of all the hardware that they have in this area. So I was given an illusion that it's thinner than it actually is. It doesn't bother me though. I just thought that was a little bit interesting. I didn't notice it at first. Taking a look at the backside, we have a 12.3 megapixel camera, no optical image stabilization. But I've seen with video that the electronic image stabilization is actually quite good. Looks very stable. I'll be excited to test this out. Hang tight for the full review. We've got a dual LED flash. You also have laser assist autofocus and a microphone. You have our fingerprint scanner here. And of course, you've got this interesting looking glass panel. I think they did this for reception. Also, I believe NFC is under here as well. We do have antenna band lines here for reception as well. At the top, we have a headphone jack. Look at that. I find it really strange that I get excited about a headphone jack. 
Right hand side we have the power button. I like that it's textured so I can tell the difference right away. You also have your volume rocker. Left hand side you have the SIM card tray that takes a nano SIM. At the bottom you have a speaker, you've got a USB Type-C charging port, fast charging, and a microphone. Then on the front we have an 8 megapixel front-facing camera, you have the receiver, ambient light sensor, proximity sensor. Then we have a 5 inch AMOLED display, probably manufactured by Samsung, so I could probably get away with calling it Super AMOLED. That's just Samsung's proprietary name for their display, the glass being really really close to the touch layer so there's no air gap. Makes a nice bright display. Then down here at the bottom is, well, nothing. Just, just a chin. And a lot of people are making fun of this because you've got phones like the iPhone that at least have a functional button here. And I'm actually not bothered about this because as phones are getting these bigger and bigger displays and less and less bezels, it's getting hard to hold onto the phone somehow. You're kind of contorting your fingers kind of like this, trying to figure out how to hold it to watch videos. So I'm not going to downplay that I actually have a nice spot to hold on to right here if I want to watch videos. Voila! It makes it so I don't have to block the speaker. Keep that in mind, you guys. Usually, if you have a bunch of bezels, you have to hold it around the side, right? So you're not touching the screen. Well, when I do this, I'm not blocking that speaker. So I don't have to cup the speaker. So I feel like there's some type of method in this madness, plus it looks symmetrical. So I'm not going to make fun of the chin. So now I'd like to take a second to thank my sponsors at Braintree so much for making content creation possible. Braintree is code for easy mobile payments, and they're basically a major reason that you can press one button and pay for something. Maybe you're working on the next Uber, Airbnb, or GitHub. Then why not use the same simple payment solution that helped them to become where they are today? Braintree's full stack payment platform is easily adaptable to whatever the future holds so that you can adapt easily too. Accept nearly any type of payment from Apple Pay to Bitcoin, Venmo, credit cards, or whatever types of payments that come next with just a few lines of code. This all means that the platform is stress-free, simple, and adaptable for mobile app developers. They offer a single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. See fewer abandoned carts and more sales with Braintree's best-in-class mobile checkout experience. So you'll always be ready whether you're earning your first dollar or your billion. Check it out at braintreepayments.com slash Erica. One thing people might have been disappointed about when hearing about the smaller phone is that it's 1080p instead of Quad HD for the resolution. And I'm actually not bothered by this at all because it's 441 pixels per inch, so it's a really good pixel density even with this Diamond Matrix Pentile at 5 inches. Looks great. Looks great to me. Plus, I expect you will have a boost in GPU performance because you don't have so many pixels to push around like the Quad HD display. So you may even see a little bit better performance on this one over the XL. I'm sure somebody can confirm that for me already. What's also nice about this display is that since it's an AMOLED display, you've got nice true blacks. So the pixels are off for the black. It seems like it's a current generation AMOLED display. And if you don't like these really saturated colors, you still have that mode where you can change it to sRGB. That tends to be the mode that I prefer because the white point changes to being warmer, not as cool. So sRGB mode, you've got a warmer white point, looks more neutral, more like D65 daylight. I'll check it out, probably is a little bit warmer than that. Plus colors that don't make me want to stab myself in the eye with a fork. But hey, it's all your choice. Some people really like punchy colors. Then when you turn this off, you've got a cooler white point, probably somewhere around 7300 Kelvin, and a lot more vibrant colors. So it's all going to be up to your choice. But overall, this display looks really nice. I do notice that my display is a little bit two-toned. I'll probably ex exchange it because of that. I see a bit more reddish at the top. It gets a little bit more greenish at the bottom. That happens with AMOLED displays. It's kind of a lottery. Stay tuned for the full review where I will do measurements and tell you just how well this display is calibrated. So let's talk a little bit about the specs and the performance that I'm noticing thus far. So this smaller device is a 2770 milliamp hour battery. So we would call that a bit on the small side. I will see how this is lasting. I imagine that it will get me through the day all right. But if you're a power user, I'm sure you're going to be having to charge this more than one time a day. We've got four gigabytes of RAM, either a 32 or a 128 gigabyte storage option. We've got the Snapdragon 821 SoC inside of this with an Adreno 530 GPU. So definitely a top spec phone. And so what I've been seeing with performance is that this phone really does fly. It feels really nice and smooth to me. 
We can take a look to see what it's doing with the frames, if we're dropping any frames. So choosing profile GPU rendering on screen as bars. And as long as we don't have these little peaks here going up over the green line, you're not dropping frames. So around the interface, I'm noticing that we're really not dropping too many frames. I rarely see a frame drop. When you swipe over to this little Google Now panel on the side, you do drop a few frames, but once you're scrolling, you can see that it looks pretty darn good. Underneath the menus, it looks pretty darn good. Going up from the app tray, you do drop a couple frames. But when scrolling through it, it looks pretty good too. So I've been pretty happy with overall smoothness, and I've been seeing that when switching between applications, even just going to the Recents tab and then double-clicking to switch between your two most recent apps, it's so fast. So the experience is great on this phone because it's really nice and smooth. Now before wrapping this impressions up, I want to talk about what really strikes me about this phone is that it really feels like a mix of different things that Google liked from a bunch of different phones and they've put it all together in here. So I see ideas from Huawei or Honor phones, like when you swipe downward on the fingerprint sensor, you can get your notification shade and you can push it back upward. If you go underneath the camera and you do a little flick of the wrist, it's going to change to the front-facing camera or the back-facing camera. So that's kind of like what Motorola has with their phones, although that is to execute the camera and this is just merely to switch between them. Otherwise, you can double press the power button anywhere you are on the interface and activate that camera. Something that looks interestingly similar to what the iPhone has is when you hold down on one of the icons, it pulls up a widget of actions. So to me, that looks a lot like 3D Touch. Pretty much just like it, but instead of pressing downward, you're simply just pressing and holding. Then of course, when you hold down on the Recents button, you're met with what looks like multi-window from Samsung phones. So I can have the calculator. You can see I can make it bigger or smaller. This will be helpful if I'm, for example, on a banking website like Bank of America and I need to calculate something here. You can do that. So this has been integrated for a little bit of time now since Nougat's come out. And you can just pull downward and it becomes full screen again. I find that it looks pretty reminiscent of the HTC 10. Now this is manufactured by HTC, but this has been designed entirely by Google. Just the way that it's chamfered on the sides here in a thick manner just really reminds me of that HTC 10. You can tell where the design language is coming from. And of course, as you've seen, it really does look like an iPhone. So between an HTC 10 and an iPhone with a weird piece of glass. So this phone is different, it's new, but it's oddly familiar. Am I upset about these things? No, absolutely not. I actually quite like them. Something new, though, is that double tap option to switch between two recent apps, and it works great. I love this thing. And then last but not least, you've got Google Assistant that I've been playing a little bit around with. Google is really going towards the artificial intelligence side with this, and it should get better over time. Right now, eh, it kind of works. It's pretty fun. So you hold down here to execute it, or you can say, okay, Google. Oops. Listening. Nosy. Very nosy. Okay, Google. Make me a sandwich. I wish I could. Luckily, I can help you find out how to make a sandwich. So they've incorporated humor with this, which is nice. So it's kind of like Siri, but more in-depth than that now. Okay, Google. Make a shopping list for me. What do you want to add? Toys. Lots of them. Okay, I've added toys. Lots of them to your shopping list. You can see I've got a shopping list that's already going. Add ice cream to my list. Sorry, lists other than shopping list are not supported. So not so smart. I was just talking about putting things on the list, and now it's telling me I must say shopping list. So okay, Google. Add ice cream to my shopping list. Okay, I've added ice cream to your shopping list. Happy now. Done. Thing thing acts like it has OCD or something. It's not funny to make fun of OCD, but she behaves that way almost. Has to be just right. I admire the app tray and how you can access it now. I like that you just swipe upward to get to it. The Google search bar is no more, but you pull on this little tab and you get to Google Now. So it feels very familiar, but new at the same time, and it's got all of the best of Google here. So I'm really excited. I'm really optimistic here. I can't wait to play with it and do a full review. 
I think that if you are an Android purist or if you're somebody who wants to have reliable updates, at least constant updates, this is going to be the phone for you. I think that if you want a really good flagship phone, but you don't want to pay the iPhone price, there are tons of other phones out there on the market for Android. Things like the OnePlus 3, for example. These are really quite expensive, so it was really hard for me to justify getting one of these unless I got the smaller one. So in the full review, I will test this all out. I'll play with the camera. I'll let you know really what I think. Possibly I'll get my hands on the XL, which really I expect just to have higher pixel density and better battery life, but otherwise just larger. So this is all that I want to say for now. I like it. I do. This has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you're thinking of this Google Pixel right now. Honestly, they should have released this in green, like an emerald green with a black face. I would have really liked that then because I think that they played it a little bit safe on the blue. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Have a good night.